Welcome to this talk about a very important Picasso picture, which has been ignored since its discovery, the Picasso estate and the world's major museums who concern themselves with the business of the art of Pablo Picasso have turned a blind eye to an extremely important discovery. This picture depicts Picasso's crucifixion at a time he described as the worst period of my life. Picasso is the central figure. He's standing on a stepladder. He's holding two paint buckets and a large decorator's paintbrush close to his abdomen. And he's got one arm outstretched on the left where this white area extends towards the black circle here. What you get is an impression of a severed arm. This is the severed part of the arm and the arm continues in light across the face of this figure here who is Picasso's wife. This is a mask disguising the identity as it were of Picasso's wife and I'll, I'll explain all this as we go into it. That severed arm we see in Guernica. We see almost the same character lying down at the base of Guernica, this character here. There is a close relationship between this picture and Guernica. Now I'll go in a bit closer so you can see the quality of the lines and the drawing. It's rather remarkable. One can see Picasso's hand in this picture. This is actually a far more complex drawing than it appears to be. Within it are dozens of symbolic concealed images and it all relates to Picasso's fascinations, his concerns, the political climate just prior to the Second World War. All these things are symbolically represented. You can see a very close association. It helps us to identify the personalities in the drawing. So this is a depiction of Mary Therese. And as we go into it, we'll see more and more reasons why we can make this association. Please note the hands, the tilted head, and the upraised shoulders. The three figures are in more or less the same poses. We have the Mary Therese figure on the left with the head tilted next to her, the crucified figure in the middle, and then to the right, we have the advancing figure with this distinctive sharp-nosed profile. It's present in the drawing, and it's also present in the three dancers. There are many more similarities within these compositions. There's a lot of common ground. As we progress, we'll see that there's been a deliberate attempt at combining a lot of important themes into one picture. Now, one of the most important themes is the Spanish bullfight. Here we see a comparative image of the concealed bull in the 1934 drawing and an Andalusian bull. The characteristic protrusion of the chest is present and one can see the general similarity. Complementing the appearance of the bull, we have a similar concealed image of the horse in the bullfight. If you follow my cursor, you'll see that on the torso of Mary Therese is a, a form in the ink wash suggestive of a horse's head. One can see certain lines in the composition which give us the indication of being an intentional image. The legs are suggested in the wash when one goes in closely, you can see these legs emphasized in the ink wash. And similarly, Picasso has incorporated the hind quarters of the horse into the buttocks and legs of Olga, who is dressed in the costume of a bullfighter. She's got the, the little bullfighter's hat and the elaborate costume of a female bullfighter. It's also worth noting that there's a suggestion of the horse's penis. Another very interesting incorporation is the presence of an owl on the head of the horse. If one looks here, this smudged 
area here. We'll compare that with a couple of Picasso pictures. We can see the impression of Picasso riding the Picador's horse when the images are isolated. At the same time, he's being crucified. He's actually at the moment of death and ascendance. It corresponds closely with the burial of Cassigamus, his friend who shot himself, and the curtain design for the ballet the 14th of July. So what we get is the impression of the Picador crucified on the back of the horse of the Corrida. In the upper register, slightly to the right, we have a frontal view of a bull's head. Please note the irregular positioning of the eyes, characteristic of Picasso portraiture in the 1930s and 40s where one eye would be elevated above the other. We have the horn suggested in diagonal lines which go towards the corner of the picture here. And the other horn is suggested by the white area that incorporates the, the outstretched arm. It's only an impression, but what's interesting about this is that it melds in with a number of other similar impressions. Below the bull's head, we have a silhouetted bull's head in the lower register. The two images, when combined, give us this impression. You can see the symmetry, the lines suggesting the outline are all present. Long there are time. several other references to the Spanish bullfight within the drawing. For example, these horizontal lines here suggest the barrera, the wooden barrier built into the perimeter of the arena. This black form coming down from the hands of the figure on the right would seem to suggest the bullfighter's cape, the muleta. The traditional sol y sombra, the sun and shade, symbolized by the light in the upper left corner and dark half moon shape above Olga's head. The picador's spear seems to be referenced by this black horizontal line above Picasso's head. There are other aspects about the drawing which also reference the Spanish bullfight. In addition to all this, Picasso's writings from this period seem to have strong associations with the drawing. At times it seems as if he's actually describing the drawing in his poetry. He talks about it in a mysterious way as a living picture which has supernatural power. We've covered the main points concerning the bullfight, so we'll move into the next theme. The drawing is to some extent a traditional crucifixion. There are a number of elements in it which are traditional crucifixion elements. Each of the three characters bears its own symbolic cross. Behind Mary Therese, we have the suggestion of a Tau cross. And behind Olga, we have another symbolic cross represented in these rather sketchy lines. The women are symbolically represented as the thieves. The spear is this horizontal line above Picasso's head. One often sees the sun and the moon in the context of traditional crucifixion. A further traditional crucifixion element is the ladder. We have it represented by the small step ladder upon which Picasso is standing. We have Picasso in the center bearing the elements of crucifixion. There's a wound suggested by this area here within the handle of the paint bucket. We can see it in other pictures by Picasso in his crucifixion drawings of around this period. So that entire vertical black column represents the blood flow from the wound of the coup de grace, this almond-shaped dark wound. Another crucifixion element can be seen in the middle of the drawing, a concealed element. What we get is the impression of a half a human skull in a frontal perspective. The brush part of Picasso's brush, the bristles, become the eye of the skull. Picasso was famous for this kind of thing. He would 
take a pictorial element and extrude from it its associated poetic genius. Yeah, this is often to see the appearance of crucifixion angels. Picasso's incorporated angels either side of the ladder. We get the impression of a wing extending out from the right hand angel, a rather bat like wing. The angel is also the column of blood, as if he's wearing a, the robe of the Grim Reaper. There's another on the left. We have two symmetrical wings one in light and one outlined in ink here and even the suggestion of a halo above its head please note the two little hands just within the frame of the ladder which would seem to be associated so what we have is picasso's personal crucifixion he felt crucified by circumstances his wife had discovered that picasso's mistress was pregnant and filed for divorce she was going to take half of picasso's art produced during the marital period and this sent picasso into a nosedive he became very depressed and he went off and lived in seclusion in Boisgaloo in Normandy at his house there. He took to writing poetry and kept himself out of the public eye while he came to terms with his own situation. This drawing was made at Boisgaloo during that initial period in May of 1934.